All right, good morning. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you at home are doing well this morning as for those tuning in online. I'm going to open us up in prayer and then we're going to get started with worship this morning. Uh, Lord, we love you so much and we are grateful to be gathered in your house to worship you this morning. Um, God, we ask that uh, this morning that you lead us, um, lead us into worship, uh, lead us into a loving relationship uh, with you. Um, God, we know that you are in our presence already, God, but we ask that you move us um, and you lead us this morning. We love you and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you will, please stand with me. We're going to sing a couple familiar songs this morning to, to kick us off in worship. So sing loud. There's only a few of us in here, so that means you got to sing loud this morning. All right? So sing with us.
again soon. Please be in prayer for Larry and Georgia. Um, both of those are in the hospital and uh, so they would uh, appreciate your prayers and so please remember them if you would uh, and, uh, and the family as they deal with mom and dad both being in the hospital. Again, thank you for being here this morning. We have an awesome, awesome celebration today. Landon Aldridge is going to receive his Eagle Scout. That is a huge deal. If any of you are familiar with scouting, if any of you have been around scouting at all, that is a big, big, big deal. So at this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Jeremy Kaiser, who is the Scout Master. Jeremy, if you would come, please. May the audience please rise. Sorry. May, sorry. May the audience please rise and join me in the presentation of the colors. Color guard, advance. Audience, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. 
the all current and previous Eagle Scouts. Rise and join me in the scouting. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout call, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Sorry, I'm forgetting stuff. Um, the scout is. May the scoutmaster please come up. Okay. Hello, my name is Jeremy Kaiser. I'm Scout Master for Troop 333. It is my honor, on behalf of the National Court of Honor of the Boy Scouts of America, I hereby declare this Court of Honor open for the purpose of awarding the Boy Scout program's highest rank to Eagle Scout Landon Aldridge. At this time, it gives me great honor to read and deliver to you this letter, which accompanies the Eagle Scout presentation documents and items. This letter comes from the National Office of the Boy Scouts of America. I actually have two letters here. Uh, this one is from the actual National Scout Office. It says, Dear Landon, congratulations, you're now an Eagle Scout. In completing all the requirements, you have mastered many valuable skills and made the Scout oath and law a part of your life. When you, what you've accomplished is impressive. It's, all, it's pretty rare. Fewer than seven out of every hundred Boy Scouts ever achieved this rank. It means you have decided yourself, put in, put in the hours and most important by ways to benefit your community. Remember that your name now appears on an exclusive list whose members have excelled in fields, fields from business to government to education. The common trait you all share is leadership. We're counting on you to aim high and continue leading by your service and example. Again, congratulations and best wishes for many more successes. Sincerely, uh, Dan OMB, National Chair, Roger Mosby, President and CEO, and Scott Sorrell's National Commissioner. Also, I have another here, letter here I want to read, who is uh, Mr. Connie Lowe's, who is the Piedmont County Scout Executive. It's their dear Landon, my hardest, hardest congratulations to you on attaining the Distinguished Eagle Scout Award. I know you have worked many hours to reach the highest honor in scouting. You are joining a relatively small but outstanding group of young men. There are men throughout the United States who are Eagle Scouts, fulfilling their leadership role in their homes, churches, community, communities, and nation. I'm sure you will do them honor in joining their ranks. The Eagle Award is not temporary, as many things are. You will always be an Eagle Scout. With it goes the obligation of good citizenship, which includes helping your fellow men by sharing your knowledge, talents, and leadership. Many people have invested their time and energies on your behalf. A word of thanks to your scoutmaster, parents, and others who have given assistance, which will be appreciated, appreciated by them. Warmest and personal regards. Um, let's see here. These letters come from the National Scout Office. Um, the Eagle Scout Award is the nation's premier youth scout service leadership and recognition program. I'm sure that you have heard and read about many millions of young men who did similar things in order to earn this award. You have perhaps read of the national and international leaders in all areas of American life who have earned this award, and perhaps been told about how many others who have also went onward to do great things. Given confidence and a great part of earning the same award, 
in which you be being presented with. Keep in mind, however, that for all those celebrities, politicians, newsmakers who have earned Eagle Scout, that there are many thousands of others who have visibly put into practice the Scout Oath and law in their daily lives. They too prove their values, value as Eagle Scouts to those who need assistance in small or less public matters. From this second onward, keep in mind that many Americans will view you in a different light. With the awarding of the small silver medal, you too will become a marked man. A man marked as a leader, a mentor, a guide, in bad times as well as good times, for the rest of your days on earth. May you always be reminded of your skills, friendships, and challenges you overcame as a scout. Many of you, and may you always be in a position to provide meaningful, cheerful, and long-lasting service to others. Here are the requirements for to obtain your Eagle Scout rank. Be an active in your scout troop for at least six months as a life scout. Be a life scout. As a life scout, demonstrate scout spirit by living the scout oath and law. Tell how you have done your duty to God, how have you lived the scout oath, the scout law in your everyday life, and how you understand the scout oath and the scout law with, will guide you in your life in your future. Earn a total of 21 merit badges. Landon earned 37 merit badges. Why and life scouts serve actively in your troop for six months in one or more of the following respects. Positions. Landon was senior patrol leader, assistant senior patrol leader, and troop guide. Wildlife Scout, plan, develop, and give leadership to others in a service project. Helpful to any religious institution, any school, or your community. Wildlife Scout, participate in the Scoutmasters Conference. Also, Wildlife Scout, participate uh, in an Eagle Court of Honor. Success successfully complete your board review for the Eagle Scout Ring. Now I'd like to uh, present Landon with his awards. If I could ask his mother to present him with his Eagle Scout badge. And he that on his left pocket. And I'd like Landon to present his mother with her Eagle Scout mother's view. And the Eagle Scout father's view. Um, I'd also like to present Landon with his Eagle Scout certificate. 
and a little uh, plastic card that he may carry in his wallet at all times, and then up on your wall. And from now on, he can wear the Eagle Scout patch on his uniform. Okay, as well. Uh, I congratulate uh, Eagle Scout Man and Aldrich on this special occasion of his life, and congratulate his parents for supporting and assisting him, and now sharing his enthusiasm and energy as this step in his life is complete. With no further business, on behalf of the National Court of Honor of Boy Scouts of America, I hereby close this Eagle Court of Honor and thank you for your from allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you very much. opportunities all along the way and invest in others as they have invested in him. God, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Color Guard, advance. Once again, what an awesome opportunity it is to celebrate the land. And uh, what, a, what a, there's not a better place to do this. And so thank you, Aldridge's, for allowing us to celebrate with Landon in doing so. Landon, congratulations. And Jeremy, thank you for being a part and having you. We are delighted that you're here this morning. What a great day it is. Number one, it's God's day. And I'm not sure about you. Um, but after, well, let me just ask, are you alive and well this morning? Okay, if you're not, you missed something about 8 o'clock. Because that should have woken you up and gotten you um, revived, okay? Uh, understand there was a little, a little earthquake around Sparta this morning. Um, matter of fact, I'm standing right there putting these signs on the pews for the Aldridge's, and all of a sudden I hear this creaking upstairs. Now nothing's moving down here, I guess because of the, the suspended floor here, I'm not sure, but it starts creaking, creaks a little bit more, and then it gets kind of louder, and I'm like, something weird going on around here, and I'm like, uh-oh, I'm getting out of here, and I ran that way, uh, pulled something in my back, I took off the heart, but I'm a little awake now, I'm sure... <laughs> He's laughing at that. that, that no, that's the truth. And my heart is recovering finally of about an hour. It scared me pretty good. I'm like, man, this thing's coming down. Anyway, and then after some great songs, uh, what a great opportunity, and then after a great celebration. Man, we should be alive and thankful today. Thank you for being here this morning. What I want you to do, let's stand and just, you know, if you want to step out, greet one another, so be it. Uh, I'm going to take an opportunity to greet a few folks online that, that I see here. Um, but you stand up and greet one another. Lord, thank you. Whether you want to wave at them or however you want to do it. Hey, Brandon Fanger, Dennis Smith, hey, Brian, Stevie Black, Nikki Williams. Harold Black, Chris Keener, good morning, guys. And uh, Jim, good morning. Reverend Steve, Kathy, 
continue in worship this morning, um, let us uh, understand and accept the love that you have for us. God, I pray for Eddie as he comes to uh, bring your message this morning, that you are prepared on his heart. God, open our ears and our hearts to receive the word this morning. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So as, uh, as you're opening your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter... 13. Uh, I noticed as I was telling that story about the, the earthquake and the roof, um, John and Jason decided to get up and check it. Now's not the time to check it. It would have been before now. <laughs> so last week we began, we, we started talking about a guy by the name of Barnabas. Barnabas the Encourager. That's kind of his nickname. And we get the idea of who Barnabas was by the acts in which he did. And a lot of that was how he encouraged people. So we ended the service last week with a Gatorade bottle that I had sitting up here. And I challenged you because uh, to be encouraging to one another. And so every time you had a Gatorade bottle, because I had a friend or a young man one time who took a Gatorade bottle, drank it, and made it what they call a Haterade bottle. And so every time you said something negative, you had to put money in. So to try to learn to be an encourager. So, you know, if it costs you something, you, you, tend to, you tend to pay a little bit more attention to it. And so um, what I decided throughout this week is that The bottle wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I am such a smart aleck and such a, you know, I just needed more than a bottle. So I'm not sure how you're doing with encouraging others, but let me encourage you to encourage others and not be negative and, and drag them down through the mud. And let's try to encourage one another. Maybe. Uh, Together we'll fill a lot of things and give it to missions. And so just think about all the negative comments. And, and it's kind of funny. This week, and Pat was watching a little bit ago, and that's our secretary. Um, Pat was watching a little bit ago, and we were telling her a little bit about what the sermon was about this past week and how we were sharing and what we were supposed to do. And, and then um, she sent me a comment just yesterday, and it was a smart aleck comment. Of course, we kind of had that relationship. She said, I'll put a dollar in the jar of money. <laughs> if we know we're kids, then it's okay if we're around one, of the, one another, but how are we lifting each other up? How are we encouraging one another? And so as we look at um, the book of Acts, and we're going to look at Paul and Barnabas here in just a moment, I want to ask you a question first. What is worship? And it's really not a, uh, a rhetorical question. This is, this is a question for you to, to help me with. So in your mind, or to you, what is worship? What does worship mean to you? Now that's, that's a tough one. I understand and it could be really easy to rattle off some real quick answers. But I really want you to think about what worship means 
to you and then maybe give me an answer. <laughs> or maybe it doesn't mean that to you and maybe it should mean that to you. I don't know. But what, what is worship? What is worship? Peggy said, putting God in his rightful place. That's a great definition. Putting God in his rightful place. That's worship to her. Now, here's a question. As we answer these things, is this where God is in our lives? Is our life a life of worship? Somebody else. I know we're not done around it. Being mindful and thankful for the gifts that he's given and giving him the honor for that and the glory for that. Being mindful and thankful for the gifts he has given and giving him honor for those things. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. That was Joanna Hubbard. Great definition. Somebody else? Where'd that come from? Okay, yeah. Okay. Putting everything else aside, concentrating, and really focusing on Him. I, I know I missed the last part, but that's pretty much what you were saying. Couldn't hear it to start with, because you had a mask on, she had to kind of relieve the, <laughs> relieve the, the mask so I could hear it. All right? Somebody else? What is worship to you? Individually connecting with God. Ooh. Individually connecting with God. Individually connecting with God. And I think that's powerful even in a corporate worship um, place or even in corporate worship. We're worshiping together, but it's still... I'm not worried about what Tracy's doing. I'm not worried about what Trevor's doing. I should be worried about what Eddie's doing. And so it is an individual focus on God. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody else. I know you're thinking at home, and, and maybe you're you're uh, responding. I have no idea. Let me get let me get up. Uh, a look to see here. Feel free to do so. Anybody else? Somebody else? What is worship to you? You can respond online. I'm watching. What is worship to you? It's a tough one. Alright, let me let me go one step further. What does worship involve? What does worship involve? Acknowledging your position in relation to God. Oh, acknowledging your position in relation to God. Did I, did I quote that correctly? That's Tracy. Um, wow. Many of us often think that we're kind of God and us are kind of right here. Really, truthfully, it's. You know, we need to understand that God's up here and we need to be looking and listening to Him. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Somebody else? Sacrifice. It involves, worship involves sacrifice. Sacrifice of time. Sacrifice of self. Sacrifice of um, offerings. Sacrifice. Yeah, absolutely. Worship involves sacrifice. Somebody else? Your heart. Worship involves your heart. Hmm. Okay. Somebody else? Being able to acknowledge your gifts and talents that you have been given and using them in worship of Him. Absolutely. We're together. That's Maggie. Somebody else? Somebody else? Obedience. Obedience. Wow. 
<laughs> we all want to worship, but we kind of want to do it in our own way, on our own time, when it's convenient, when it's, you know, yeah. All right, one more. Somebody, one more. She said, fellowship, fellowship. And I'm just telling you, you know, it's nice to see folks in here. It's nice to see your faces. Scouts, I'm glad to have y'all here. It's kind of awesome to have you guys over here. But we miss connection with folks. You miss fellowship when we're not together. And being able to worship together is a huge deal. Now, since we're in Acts chapter 13, let's look at it. Let's begin with verse 1 of 13. In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. Now, you'll also notice in the chapter before that that Herod uh, had died um, a, a rather gruesome death. But you've got one of his friends and, and Saul. Verse 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them on. The two of them, verse 4, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salmas, Salmas, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their going. Then they traveled along and traveled along. And I'm be if you ever need a way to share the gospel with somebody, from the beginning of time to the end, uh, or, or until uh, Jesus, if you will just read chapter 13, verses 13 and following, you will get a great explanation of the gospel. And we will deal with that maybe at another time, but this morning, I want us to potentially think about what worship is and what it means to us and what we can learn from Barnabas and Paul and how we can apply it to ourselves. I think this really fits with Landon, with leadership and encouragement. Because I really believe we have to lead by example and we have to encourage others in the faith. Because honest to goodness, if we're not leading, then people aren't involved. If we're not encouraging, people are turned away from the gospel. You follow me? So what are you doing? Now, I want to think about this for just a second. Let me use a story I heard. There were two lumberjacks working in a company of the old days where they were failing trees or falling trees with axes. Lumberjacks. There was an old lumberjack who'd been around for years. And there was this young, brawn, big lumberjack who came to work for the company. And they worked together side by side all the time. And the young, big, stout, brawn man said, You know what? I bet you I can cut more trees than you in a day. The old man took the weight and said, okay. So they started out early one morning and the young man 
went to wailing on trees. I mean, he could. And he could. And he fell this tree. He fell that tree. He cut this tree down. He cut that tree down. And the old man started at the same time. And he was cutting trees down. But the young man looked over and noticed that about an hour in, the old man took a break for 15 minutes. And the young man kept looking at himself and he said, I got this. There's no way he cuts more trees than I do. He's still pretty calm. At the end of the day, the old man had cut a third more trees than the young man. Even though every hour he took a break for 15 minutes. The young man was upset. Kind of his pride was hurt. He looked over at the old man and he said, how in the world did you cut more trees than me in a day when I didn't stop? The old man looked at him. He said, well, you were working hard to cut. I took a break. And while I stopped, I was sharpening my axe. Now the moral of the story is we're working hard all the time. We are all the time working diligently with something in mind but with dull axes and wonder why the trees around us aren't falling. And I'm going to tell you right now according to the biblical text Part of the reason we're not fasting and praying. We're not fasting and praying. Why fast and pray? Now, I don't know. Uh, Tony Evans uses this definition, and I don't know where he got it, of fasting. It's, an, uh, it's a, a deliberate abstinence from the physical gratification in order to achieve a spiritual good. That's what fasting is. Let me repeat that. It's a deliberate abstinence from the physical gratification in order to achieve a spiritual good. The denial of the flesh to gain a response from the spirit. You see, we feed the flesh all the time. We're all the time giving the flesh what the flesh wants and not paying attention to the Spirit. Turn with me, if you would, over to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. This talks about true fasting. And it's interesting. I want to look at two particular purposes in fasting. The first is denial of the flesh to gain a response from the Spirit. Then, let's look at how this writer uses it. Verse 58, uh, chapter 58, verse 1. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For the day for after the day they seek me out, they seem eager to know my ways. And if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of God, they ask me for just decisions. Sounds a little familiar, huh? Keep going. And eager for God to come near you. We fasted, they say. And you have not seen it. Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your work. You see, on a day of fasting, we do what we want to do. It's not about seeking God. It's not about seeking 
His will. It's not about seeking Him in our lives. It's still a matter of doing what we want to do. Keep going. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. Well, obviously you're not doing it right. And in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today. You cannot expect your voice to be heard on high. Now, what's the purpose of fasting? To expect your voice to be heard on high. Part of fasting is to expect your voice to be heard on high. Drawing closer to God to expect my voice. God, speak to me. And that's part of the prayer. It's all part of fasting. Keep going. Is, verse 5, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Question mark. Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed, reed or for lying in sackcloth and ashes. Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Big question. No. See, he's questioning them. What are you doing? How are you fasting? It's truly bowing one's head before the Lord. Tracy, you, your, your, your statement about putting God in His rightful place is so true about worship and how we fast. And the idea behind fasting is putting God first. Is it, is it a matter of doing without food? Yes. Is it a matter of doing without some other things? Yes. It's a matter of denying the physical flesh of something that we want in order to attain a relationship with God because these things, by the way, are getting in the way of allowing God to hear from us. <laughs> You know, we get a little hungry and we make a sandwich. As a matter of fact, we'll scourge in the, in the, in the, in the pantry, we'll scourge in the, in the refrigerator just to find something to make a sandwich. We don't care because we're hungry. I'm reminded of the Blues Brothers. I don't know why, but I am. And a wish sandwich. Two pieces of bread and wish you had some meat. The idea is, we'll go seek food. It doesn't matter what it is. We'll do whatever we can to find that food. But how are we seeking God? Are we doing whatever it takes to seek Him? And sometimes that means removing those things in our lives. Isaiah 58 is an excellent excellent chapter on fasting and we will visit that again another time but if you turn back to Acts 13 I want you to notice what they were doing verse 2 while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting the Holy Spirit and then if you go to the next verse it says so after they had they had fasted and what? Prayed. After they had fasted and prayed. So my question to you really today is this. As we look at Paul and Barnabas, as we look at the things that we how they encourage us to get closer to God, notice that God sent them out through the Holy Spirit after they had fasted and and pray. How sharp is your axe? The reason I ask that, how is your prayer life? If I were to say, Drew, how is your prayer life? If I were to say, Deanna, how is your prayer life? If I were to say, David, how is your prayer life? If I were to say, Melissa, how is your prayer life? Hey, how's your prayer? What would it be? Are you drawing closer to God? Are you listening to God? And by the way, I'm just as guilty as many of you. It's easy to let other things get in the way and not spend time with God. It's easy to get up, get your pop cart, get your diet, diet, sun drop, get here to work. 
that's done. That's done. Matter of fact, two dads are done. <laughs> One bag of popcorn, two dads are done. It's easy to start our day that way and then forget the important things. Do you start your day with prayer? I think it was Martin Luther who said something to the effect that how much time he spent in prayer, and I think I can't remember the time frame exactly, but it was. He got more done when he stopped and prayed in the morning than when he just went about his day. If he started his day right on and just went ahead, he got more done if he set aside that time for prayer, whether it be 30 minutes or an hour. He got way more done because he was focused and God was in it. How's your prayer life? Now, I understand fasting is a little foreign to most of us, and we'll explore that a little bit more. But what I want you what I want to challenge you to do this week is think about your prayer time. Think about the time that you're spending in prayer so that God can send you out. I can promise you when you go out, if you're not prayed of, the world's going to attack you and get at you and beat at you and get into little creases that are bothering you and it's going to grow and grow until that part becomes the major part of your life instead of your heart. Father, Jesus. So today, as you look at Barnabas and Paul, and it's very quick and it's very, it's very precise. How sharp is your axe? How much time are you stopping to sharpen your axe? You do know that there's a Bible verse that says iron sharpens iron, aren't you? Each other. We're sharpening each other. But to sharpen somebody, you've got to be what? Sharp yourself. You can't do it. Barnabas is an encourager. And he encourages us to follow the way that we should be going. Seeking God. So, Brandon Finger said, submission to the fact that it's not about me. That's what worship is. David Fry says, recognizing God is the creator and all things work together for the good of those who know and will accept. That's impressive, David. I didn't even know you had any theological insight. <laughs> Love it. Just kidding. Hater. <laughs> Hater, sorry. There goes another daughter. <laughs> Love you, David. Ladies and gentlemen, how's your prayer life? And that's what I want to challenge us to look at today. This week, as you continue to work through, ask yourself, what if I started my day with 30 minutes of prayer? What if my life consisted of a monthly fast or a weekly fast or a daily fast? I'm not saying go for a fast for a month. I'm saying once a month or once a week or <laughs> once a day. I'm telling you, God wants to tell you something. But unless you're listening and talking to Him, you'll never hear. Let's pray with you. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the opportunity to worship Him, to think about loving Him, to think about prayer, to think about fasting. God, I challenge, I really, the challenge is for me to look at my life and as I look at mine, to lead so others will follow. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Paul and Barnabas, for being in tune to the Holy Spirit. But we pray these things. 
you've got a decision to make this morning, I'll be down front. If you know Jesus uh, and just want to pray, the time is yours. Perhaps at this time, you're just looking for a church to love and be a part of and, and fellowship with. I'll be down front to meet you. Let's stand as we sing together. Amen. Mm-hmm.
ici depuis deux semaines. This is uh, James and Debbie Wood. They have been visiting for quite a while. Um, they're almost family here. They, they work harder probably here than uh, some of y'all. Uh, they've just been in and around. And, uh, they've served and, and done so much. And so we're, we're very thankful and, and grateful. They come this morning wishing to uh, join with this fellowship. And if you're online, you feel free to vote too. Um, but here's the deal. What we have to do is, uh, do I hear a motion that we receive, James and Debbie, from a local um, congregation, they are coming um, as baptized believers. As baptized. Do I hear? Oh, we got us. Okay, second. Man, we got like motions and seconds everywhere. So, uh, all those in favor, would you say aye? Aye. Opposed, like sign, of course, there never is. So, James and Debbie, thank you. I'm trying to stay on six feet, you know, the best I can. Uh, you know, it's all good. Um, we are delighted to have you guys here. What an awesome honor. Um, I, she told me earlier this week that they were coming, and I said, are you sure? Because we're a local bunch of sinners, and we are led by a big goober. And that was me. She said, that's okay. James is a goober, too. And that's right. <laughs> James just said, put some money in the jar. <laughs> um, but anyway, James and Dave, thank you. We look forward to worshiping and serving with you guys. You guys are awesome. I'm going to ask them if they'll remain down. This is kind of weird because we don't know, you know, you can't really shake. You can't do it. I'll, I'll remove the tape from here. You guys can walk through there and I'll ask them to stay back here. Just come and greet them. Um, tell them hello. And uh, make sure you introduce yourself just in case they don't know you. Uh, James and Debbie, thank you so much. Absolutely. Would you join us in prayer? Gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you. God, we, we love you and we praise you. God, we thank you for Landon. We uh, look forward to watching him continue to grow and, and lead. Lord, um, thank you for the example of Barnabas and Paul in worshiping and praying and fasting. God, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' holy name, holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Good day and God bless you.